Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the contents of this package show here on a Wednesday. We actually don't have a pack that's coming out this week, but we do have a special guest. My man, Chris Stevens. How you doing, man? I'm good, man. How are you? Good, good. So just over a year ago in late May, we dropped the Summer Nights Volume 1 pack. Mm. And um, it was a sample pack that was tailor-made for for the summer and was pretty much prominently f- featuring you. You know what I'm saying? World-renowned horn player. Huh. And musical director, yeah, man. So what's been what's been up? How you been? I'm good, man. Just been working, um, trying to build things up with my band again. Now that I'm home off the road for a little while. Okay, what's the name of your band? Vertical Current. Okay, okay. You guys have any music out right now? Yeah, we have four albums out. Um, I know, I know you do. But the I latest <laughs> one is called "The Future Is Bright." Mm-hmm. Uh, we just released that. When was that? September. Okay. Of last year. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So first things first, um, one of the things we do in this show is it's it's just basically like a background into how packs were created. Okay. And then also, too, I just want the folks at home to just get to know you a little bit better because we haven't prominently fe- featured you in anything outside of Chris's feature on this pack. So I okay. want everybody to get to know you, ask you a few questions. So cool. Uh, first things first, let's take it back to last year. Um, what was it like working on this particular pack? Uh, if I remember correctly, um, Smythe said that this was actually the first sample pack that you've ever worked on? True. Okay. Yeah. So how was the process? Um, well, all the the clips are like minute long. Mm-hmm. So it went by quickly. Mm-hmm. But um, it was interesting just to, to hear what the concepts were that were laid down already and to try to find um, what would be appropriate for it, you mm-hmm. know, um, but it wasn't really difficult. It was a pretty simple process, I think. Gotcha. Yeah. So it was pretty much, uh, I think Joel was like the executive producer of that particular pack. So he pretty much laid down the 10 compositions. And then or I, I think you were actually on five out of the 10 or maybe six out of the 10, if I remember Something correctly. Something like that, yeah. Okay. So he sent over the five or six, and then you basically took that, and, and then you went, you know, with whatever came to mind in that process. Yeah, with the exception of, there were a couple that they had uh, melodic ideas that they wanted me to copy. So did that. And then in other spaces, I just improvised. Okay, cool. And when you're doing that um, for the stuff that they want you to specifically write, are they giving you written music or like, how does that work? No, it's just audio references, no charts. Okay. Okay. And you're classically trained, obviously. I wouldn't say classically trained, but um, I did study music. I graduated from Temple in 2012. Okay. Young fella. (laughs) <laughs> oh well sure <laughs> yeah yeah sure. i'll take it um the next time that we worked together was on port Ridge volume six which is uh which is definitely a fan favorite still to this day it's our highest selling sample pack by far um close second uh pudge's legacy pack mm. is slowly catching up you know what i mean because big name you know what i'm saying i mean it makes sense but um uh, and Port Ridge Volume 7 is actually coming out very, very soon, which you will be featured on as well, hopefully. Looking forward to it. Yeah. So um, can you just share the experience of what it was like working on Volume 6? Because I think it was a little bit different, obviously, than working on The Summer Nights. 6 was a little different. Um, for 6, I was able to lay down more horn arrangement ideas as opposed to just uh, grabbing melodies. Mm-hmm. Um so it was fun just being in that creative space. Mm-hmm. And um, the sound of it all was really cool, too. I mean, the first one was great. Right. But the second one was just something different. So right. I appreciated the approach on that one um, in particular. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, also, you know, Pudge is my cousin. So oh, really? I don't think he was on that first pack. So it was cool to be on the pack with him. I had no idea y'all were related. Yeah. First he, he doesn't tell me anything. You know <laughs> what I mean? Um, so like you were saying, uh, on summer nights, it's more lead based mm-hmm, rather right. than more harmonies yeah. in, in the second part. Got you. Got you. Um, and so now that we've gotten kind of like some of the backstory and some of the former packs and stuff, uh, I'm more interested in sharing your story with the folks that don't know you and for folks to get to know you a little bit better. So I know that you've, you've MD'd and toured with some greats in the past. Mm-hmm. If uh, my sources are correct, um, can you give us a quick rundown on some of the artists that you toured with, 
and even some of the places that you visited, you know, while touring? Sure. Um, so touring, uh, I'm out with John Legend um, right now. Mm -hmm. Been with him for the last four and a half years. Mm -hmm. um, and when I'm not with him, uh, I'm often out with Eric Roberson. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to that, I did a good run with Jeff Bradshaw, which turned into a tour with Kenny Lattimore. Okay. And a slew of dates with The Roots, um, which was incredible because I was able to do 4th of July with them a couple years in a row. So that uh, afforded me the opportunity to work with Earth, Wind & Fire, Michael McDonald, Eddie Levert, Lauren Hill, Common, Queen Latifah, a whole bunch of people. So, um, But before all of that, mm -hmm. uh, I was working mainly in gospel, almost exclusively. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was touring with my cousin, uh, Ty Tribbett. Gotcha. Um, and so I did that for at least 11 years, maybe longer. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's pretty much the extent of it, I guess. Um, aside gotcha. from that. I have my own band, Vertical Current, which I mentioned earlier, but then I have a second band, the Chris Stevens Quartet, mm -hmm. and um, and then I also work with other local groups and right. whoever calls, I guess. I did um, BET Awards with J. Cole last summer, okay. you know, so. Gotcha. What's, it, what's, what's the process like when, like, a big artist like that hits you up? Do they give you something that they already have in mind, or are they kind of putting you on the spot to, to do what you do best? Um... I would say it was a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. um, so DJ Dummy, who's uh, J. Cole's MD, mm -hmm. is the one who contacted me. Um, and they sent me, uh, they didn't send me the songs right away, but I knew he had a new record. So mm -hmm. I listened to the record to see if there were any horns. Right. And I didn't know at first that I was going to be the only horn on the gig. Wow. So um, when I listened, there were a couple tunes. Um that had horns, and one is actually a sample from this Norman Connors record. Mm -hmm. So it's got Eddie Harris playing this killing trumpet solo, and the trumpet solo is actually what they sampled okay. for uh, one of the songs. So I just learned the sample. Um, I learned the, the solo verbatim, and I played that. But then when we got to rehearsal, that there was this whole intro that they wanted. They wanted me to start the whole performance. So it was just wow. me. I'm like, okay, yeah, <laughs> just me. And initially, I think he was supposed to start off the award ceremony. Okay, so I'm like. So first time on the BET Awards with J. Cole, and I'm going to be the first thing you hear. That's uh, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but well-deserved, man. Yeah. Like, seriously, I mean, you know, your reputation goes before you. Sure. Uh, I was grateful for the opportunity, and, you know, we had sufficient rehearsal time, so I was working on it every chance I got, you know, just trying to get the ideas right and to give a good performance. Got you. Mm -hmm. Now, is there, a, is there a distinction when you're working with like a mainstream artist, like a J. Cole, and then when you're working with like a G.A. back in the day when you were with Ty? Like, um, were you on the Victory album? Yeah. I'm on. Okay. So I've, so I've probably actually seen you live and just didn't know, <laughs> didn't know it was you. Because every, every now and again, me and Pudge get into this weird thing where I, I get weird. It's not, I'm not weirded out, but I remember seeing Pudge mm -hmm. on stage when I was like, 20, 24 years old. I'm 38 now. Okay. So I remember seeing him on stage and, you know, don't know him from a can of paint, but, you know, now we're good friends or we're working together. So, so you were, so you were part of the Victory album. Yeah, I was part of the Victory album. Funny thing about that though, um, <laughs> I played a little guitar on that album. Really? And, um, it was kind of, I was spending so much time working on guitar parts. Mm -hmm. The horn section was like, you know, you got to, come up with some horn parts, <laughs> right. you know, so they actually worked out a lot of the arrangements for that album. Um, but yeah, I was on there and um, I'm on all the albums um, through Greater Than. Okay. And then everything after that is, you know, other people. Gotcha. You know. Gotcha. And and again, just to, just to go back, was the process, is the process a lot different with working with like a GA as, you know, in comparison to, hitting a BET stage or is it pretty much like the same type of preparation? Um, I'm going to say that it's different uh, for several reasons. Mm -hmm. One, because that was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So um, even though Ty was signed, just the gospel industry at that time, you know, had a certain way of working. Okay. Um, but aside from all that, with it being family and with us having been together for the period of time that we were, we spent a lot of time together 
even off stage. So right. there were different dynamics at play um, that I couldn't really have with J. Cole because I knew a couple of the guys from actually from working with Todd. Right. Um, but for the most part, it was new people, mm -hmm. you know. So um, I think a good portion of the time was just spent on work and then sometime kind of cultivating those relationships. Musically, you know, same thing applies, you know, know your stuff when you show up and right. do your best when it's time to do it, you know. Gotcha. Um, business side, I guess, was a little different, but I feel like it's different from artist to artist anyway. Right. Um, so I don't know. Does that answer your question? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. What's it like working with John Legend? It's fun. It's um, it's exciting. I get to see a lot of places I probably wouldn't get to see otherwise because he goes he doesn't just go to the normal places you know like everybody plays LA everybody plays New York this guy plays like where do we go Lebanon mm, <laughs> you right. know like who flies into Beirut for a gig you right, know right 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 um and when you guys are overseas and like in like a Lebanon is are the shows just as sold out as they are in the states yeah, um, his shows are usually pretty full everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. Oddly enough, though, even in other countries, they sing along, especially All of Me. Everybody knows All of Me, and it doesn't matter if they nor normally speak the language or not. Somehow they know that song, right? and they sing it. Everybody sings it. It's crazy. It's not a lot of words. You know what I mean? <laughs> But I mean, that's that's to me. That's well, what makes like a like a you know. It's a not really a lot of words in the chorus, but that's they know I'm the saying. verses. Is what I'm saying. Oh, they, wow. they sing the entire song from start to finish. Wow, you know, like droves of people. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. So it's a great song. You know what I mean? It's a hit for a reason. Yeah, straight mm -hmm. up. Um, so now that we've kind of covered some of your go tos as far as uh, with traveling with greats and stuff like that, uh, I definitely wanted to get into the hardware. Okay. As far as being a horn player. So obviously I'm I'm pretty sure you've worked with different manufacturers over time. Mm -hmm. Um, do you have a go to now as far as a brand? I do. Okay. I'm happy to say that I'm working with a company called P Marriott. Mm -hmm. Um, they have this new trumpet out, it's the PMT seventy five. Mm -hmm. And I just started playing it. I got it maybe a month ago and I am loving this horn. It's just so smooth and free and um it's really helping me tap into the sound that, you know, is in my head, you know, mm. so. Gotcha. Now, is there, I used to play trumpet, like, all the way through school. Nowhere near as good as you, you oh, know. Oh, whatever, man. Um, is there a specific type of sound or or place that you like to rest in? Because, you know, there's so many different styles. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, like, the Summer Nights pack was very jazzy, and then Port Rich was more, it was kind of just your genuine your regular run-of-the-mill type of soul, mm -hmm. is there a pocket that you like to stay in the majority of the time or that you're most comfortable in, I should say? Um, man, I don't know. Um, I guess somewhere between that funk and soul mm -hmm. just because it's very, it tends to be very rhythmic and colorful, mm -hmm. which is great for what I do, you know. Mm -hmm. Um I don't know. I, I do a lot of different things, so I kind of like a little bit of everything. Okay. Okay. And and also, too, uh, one of the things that I've always wanted to ask a horn player is, so obviously when you're out on stage, you have different size stages. Mm -hmm. um, do you do you go in between different horns depending on, like, the stage or the venue that you're at or even some of your different accessories? Like, do you use certain accessories if the room is smaller or if the room is bigger? Hmm. Um, no, not really. Okay. That's not really a determining factor for me. Um, it's more so the, um, the music, you know what I mean? What the music requires mm -hmm. and also the artists, cause some artists are a little more experimental. Right. So like if I go out with Eric Robertson, I can bring everything I own. Like he's down for that. Bring all the pedals, bring the electric trumpet, bring it, you know, mutes and everything mm -hmm. right you know play keys on the side whatever right. he's cool like that gotcha. you know but other situations are just kind of like you know play these parts right do these dance moves you know stay out of the way <laughs> <You know what laughs> right, right right so you know i just try to do whatever seems appropriate gotcha 
And that was one thing I, I attended one of your rehearsals with Ode to, Ode to Omni mm-hmm. a couple months back. I had no idea that you guys use pedals. Oh, yeah. So I was standing there, and I, I think literally the first, if you go and watch the, the YouTube clip, the first clip that you see is me, like, watching the pedals. Because, <laughs> you know, I looked down, and I was like, oh, these are Smythe's pedals. No, they were they were Chris's pedals. And that caught me off guard. And the other thing that I didn't notice, that I did not know, was that you actually have your own individual mic clipped right on to the end of your end of your horn. Oh, yeah. As opposed to having a standard microphone like right in front. Now, is that because you're getting a particular type of sound and resonance if you use that particular mic or um yes and no. I mean, I like that particular mic as opposed to some other clip-on mics that I've used. Mm-hmm. But um mainly it just gives me the freedom like I like to dance and stuff when I'm playing and if I'm tethered to a stand, mm-hmm. you know, I might need to come in on a part and I'm over here and the mic is over there, you know, I can time it, but it's just easier that it's all always attached right. to my Volume won't change drastically. Plus, when I solo, I tend to close my eyes. <laughs> and it's like, all right, <laughs> right, we didn't hear half of that, you know? So right. clip-on keeps me present. Got you. That that totally makes sense. Now for the pedals, now how does that work? What is that for, a different type of effects? or? Yeah, it's all sorts of effects. So since I saw you last, I actually triggered in a couple pedals and got something different. Mm-hmm. Um, so I still have the Digitech uh, Whammy 5, okay. which is a pitch shifter. Mm-hmm. Um, and harmonizer uh, is a really cool pedal. Um, now, when you use a harmonizer, is that because you're the only horn player and you might need? Yeah, or you know, for like solos to kind of color up the solos. Okay. Um, I can also get like a chorus kind of effect with that. Mm-hmm. Um, but sometimes I use it even if there's a section plan. If um, I just want to add another layer to it, like okay. maybe we're playing, and you know, like with Otami, maybe it's a gig that Frank is not on, so no trombone. Right. There's two trumpets, and I want to add some low end so I can drop that octave, you know. Or, you know, I don't usually do this to cheat or whatever, but you know, for the extra effect of having that other high octave, right? That's like beyond trumpet, right? <laughs> you know, I can use it for that, you know. Mm. But then I have this other pedal, which I'm loving. It's called the Mono Synth. It's by Electro Harmonics. Okay. And um, it just gives me synthesizer sounds, but just going straight for my trumpet. And it's it's more reliable for me than um, the MIDI setup that I had prior mm. because um, the tracking just wasn't the best. Um, mm. But the tracking on this is really good. Also, I can get cool harmonies. So sometimes I'll pair that with the whammy pedal, and wow. then I'm working with three and four part harmony, and you know it's really colorful, so it's fun. That's now 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 you're gonna get me out of the out of the crib, and next time you're doing something, oh yeah, man. like we all got to come out and see that because I love to see that. And I told you I felt so bad because I actually I missed the performance when you guys were on uh mm-hmm. on the Q show out in Philly, and I, I feel real bad about that. But um, but we're definitely gonna. We're definitely gonna make our way out to to one of the next shows for sure, man. Yeah. Are yeah. you coming Thursday? We're in Camden Thursday. I, I can't come Thursday. I have my daughter Thursday. Okay. But whatever, especially if it's a Friday or a Saturday, I'm in there. Cool. I'm in there, man. Well, that's pretty much like all the questions that I had. Um, is there anything? Can we expect maybe a, a sample pack from you by yourself, maybe in the future? Hmm. Um, I would love to do one. Because I'm telling you right now, you're sitting there and you're talking about harmonics and stuff. And I'm like, can we get that on a sample pack? You know? That would be fun. I would do it. So, help a brother out. Yeah. <laughs> so, y'all heard it first. So, that there's no disclaimer from me. You heard it straight from Chris. You'll hear that really soon. But really appreciate you coming through, man. And uh, hope that the folks at home got to know you a little bit better, man. But uh, thanks awesome. for coming through, man. Thanks for having me. For sure.